Test, test, one, two. Well, we welcome you to Wednesday night Bible study at Real Life Church. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to those of you who are watching via the internet. Uh, if you have any questions during the teaching or if you have any prayer requests, uh, send an email to connect at reallifefl.com. That's connect at reallifefl.com. And we'll be sure to respond to you and to pray for any prayer requests that you submit. We do love you. We do care about you. In Jesus' name, amen, church. Amen. amen. Well, let's, uh, let's pray this evening. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you that you never leave us. You never forsake us, Father. Thank you for the victory, the triumph that you have given us in Jesus Christ. If we will but consider Jesus, the one who endured the cross, for the joy that was set before him, that joy being relationship with us. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you that you pursued each one of us, Father, knocked on the door of our hearts, letting us know that you love us and that you provided for relationship with you through Jesus Christ, your Son. So tonight, we thank you for your word. We receive your word with open eyes, with open hearts, with open minds. Father, we purpose to leave here transformed by your word and the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, Jesus told me to remind you tonight that you are blessed. You are blessed. In Deuteronomy 28, we see that if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. I just want to pause right there, and I want to encourage you, because Jesus fulfilled all those commandments perfectly, so you don't have to fulfill them perfectly. Amen? And so because Jesus fulfilled them perfectly, you are blessed. All these blessings shall come upon you, shall overtake you, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be, shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. What if you could get a revelation of this, that I am blessed. In Christ I am blessed, so that I know whether I'm coming in or whether I'm going out. I am blessed. Doesn't that change the way that you approach life and the way you approach other people? Amen? Amen? It changes your mindset. You see, the Word of God teaches us God's way of thinking, right? And so God's way of thinking is that I am blessed. I am walking in abundance. I'm walking in prosperity. I'm not walking in poverty. My God is not a God of poverty. He's a God of abundance. He's a God of more than enough. Amen? I am blessed coming in and going out. He says, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way, and guess what? They're going to flee from you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you and your barns, and in all that you undertake. You go down to verse 12, it says, He is blessing the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You're going up and not down. Receive that word tonight. You are increasing in the name of Jesus. You're going up and not down. As a world overcomer, you are on the increase. You are on the rise. Amen? You are the victor in Jesus Christ. And this is what the Lord is saying to us. But all too often, the way we live our lives does not line up to what the word just told us. I'm blessed, but do I live like it? Do I think like it? Do I talk like it? Do I interact with others like I'm blessed? You know, all too often, we find ourselves weary. We find ourselves exhausted, right? Mentally, physically tired. Jesus says in Matthew, turn over to Matthew. Let's go over there. Matthew chapter 11. As we continue in our Overcomer series this evening. So Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, let's begin reading in verse 25. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, 
that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. He says, come to me. This is an invitation. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, I am lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. To be weary is to be physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, or strain. And what Jesus is telling us here is totally against what the world would tell you. The world tells you you have to figure it out on your own. You have to do it in your own strength. You have to come up with your own strategy, your own plan to succeed. But Jesus is saying, all you who are weary, who are physically and mentally exhausted in your soul, did you know that your spirit is always at rest? Think about that. Your born-again spirit man is always in the peace of Christ. If I'm weary in my physical mind, in my soul, if I'm exhausted, it's because I'm not releasing the peace of Christ from my spirit man. Think about that. That means that I'm trying to do things in my own strength. Jesus says, come to me, you who are trying to do it in the flesh. Come to me, you who are tired, you who are weary, you who are exhausted. Come to me and I will give you rest. And he uses the example of a yoke. A yoke was put on an oxen. A yoke is a symbol of submission, of servitude. Submission. Jesus is saying, submit to me. Submit to me, and you'll find rest. Serve me, and you'll find rest. You don't find rest in serving yourself. You don't find rest in serving yourself. And this was something we touched on last Wednesday, is that we have to learn to submit daily in the moment to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? We have to learn to submit. An overcomer has to submit to Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 5, I only say what I hear the Father saying. I only do what I see the Father doing. Can you say that tonight? Today, as I was doing whatever you were doing, did you say what you heard the Father saying? Did you do what you saw the Father doing? This is submission. This is me submitting to Jesus Christ as my Lord. To live as Christ, Paul says in Philippians. To live as Christ. Can I say that? Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Learn from me. You see, the yoke was was used to put on a couple of oxen to teach the younger ox how to obey. Jesus says, come under my yoke. It's not heavy. It's not hard. What he's saying is, if you will learn to submit to me, And say what you hear me saying. And do what you see me doing. You will walk in victory. The Christian life should not be a struggle. It should not be a struggle. And if you're struggling, if you're not getting the results that Jesus got and that Paul got, can I I encourage you to submit to Jesus? To come to Jesus and quit trying to do it in the flesh? To come to Jesus and find rest? The writer of Hebrews says to consider Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who endured the cross for the joy that was set before Him. Relationship with us. Consider Jesus. If you're struggling, maybe you're not considering Jesus. In whatever that circumstance is, whatever that challenge may be, come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened. He doesn't discriminate. The invitation is to all. And I will give you rest. 
Learn from me. I'm gentle. I'm lowly in heart. This is another thing we need to learn from Jesus. Jesus is gentle. He doesn't force Himself on you. He doesn't make you submit. He doesn't take a whip and and make you submit. Jesus is gentle. He says He's lowly. He came into the, this earth born into a manger. He wasn't born into the Holiday Inn or the W. He came into a lowly manger. He entered Jerusalem on a donkey. Come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. You will learn from me. You'll learn how to walk in humility. You'll learn how to walk in gentleness. You'll learn how to walk in my love. You'll learn how to walk in the rest that I provide for your souls. You see, my responsibility as a believer in Jesus Christ is to walk in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. To allow the peace of Christ to rule my heart. Amen? Amen. To allow the peace of Christ to umpire my every decision throughout the day. If I don't have peace about it, we're not doing it. Amen? Amen? You know, just as I was arriving here in the parking lot, my wife called me. I thought she was calling to check on me. She was calling to tell me that Yorkie ran away again. Oh. <laughs> and I said, well... What are we going to do? I put it back on that neighborhood website. <laughs> and she said, well, I believe the Spirit's telling me to go for a little walk here with Josiah. I said, well, maybe you'll find him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 30 minutes later, I found him. She sounded kind of disappointed that she found him. <laughs> but I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit will guide you in the moment. We've got to learn to look to the Holy Spirit. Amen? I tell you, when I received that call, I was determined not to... Give my peace away, amen? I was keeping my peace in the name of Jesus. I said, well, dear, I've got to focus here. I'm going to keep my peace in Jesus' name, amen? I'm not going to get into anxiety. I'm not going to get worried. I'm not going to be fearful, amen? amen. Right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isaiah 40, 31. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The key here is considering Jesus, looking to the Lord. If you want to be the world overcomer that Jesus says you are, you've got to learn to look to Jesus. You've got to submit to Jesus. Amen? You've got to wait upon the Lord. Wait until He tells you to do something. Wait until He tells you to say something. We get in so much trouble by saying things before we're supposed to say things. Amen? By doing things before we're supposed to. Thinking that I've got to make it happen in the flesh. No. That leads to terrible things. It leads to destruction. It leads to hurt feelings. Amen? Painful things in relationships. God has called us to look to Him, to wait upon Him. Now, I don't want to go into the details of this one situation, but there was a situation in my life where uh, it was a financial thing with a, with a friend, and it needed to be taken care of. And I said, Lord, this has got to be taken care of. And the Lord told me, just wait. I'm going to take care of it peacefully. If you try to take care of it now, it's going to blow up on you. And so I said, all right, Lord, all right. So we were patient, we were patient, my wife and I both. And two years later, it was finally taken care of peacefully. But I'm going to tell you, during those two years, there were a couple times when it's like, Lord, when is this going to be taken care of? This needs to go away. But God says, wait on me. Wait on me and you shall renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings like eagles. This is a beautiful picture of an overcomer. Mount up with wings like eagles to be able to see your circumstances from God's perspective. Amen? To be able to see things from God's perspective, to see how God is connecting the dots. If you look at your past, you can see how God has connected the dots up to this point in your life. Amen? You can see how God has, even things that the devil meant for harm in your life, you can see how God, because you were seeking Him, turned it around for your good and connected the dots, brought the right people into your life, brought the right ideas to your mind, amen, so that you are prospering, amen, so that you are walking in His peace, walking in His abundance. 
You shall run and not be physically exhausted. You shall run and not be mentally exhausted. Amen? Doesn't that encourage you? You shall walk and not faint. I am who Jesus says I am. I am the world overcomer. I overcome the world. I overcome my flesh. And I overcome the enemy in the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Amen, church? Turn over to uh, 1 John 5. First John, First John 5, verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. So you and I have to cooperate. We have to believe, as He gives us faith to believe, that Jesus Christ has been born of God. The very essence, the very nature of God, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. There's a natural progression there. Out of love, I obey His commandments. I obey His teaching and instruction that I know are good for me. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So there's a prerequisite to overcoming the world. To you walking in the victory that Jesus has provided, you have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God, that God raised Him from the dead on the third day. And as you believe and you begin to learn how to walk in His supernatural faith, you will overcome in every situation. Amen. Amen? You know, I've heard people tell me before, you know, well, I don't feel like a world overcomer today. I mean, I could barely get out of bed today, you know, and I just feel hopeless and blah, 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 blah. It's like the Charlie Brown adults, you know. Wah, 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 wah. Come on. Do we believe this word or not? He sent his word and healed them all. Jesus went around, Acts 10, 38, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Listen, if you've got oppression in your life, it's not Jesus. It's the devil. And Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So guess that what? Guess what our mission is as little Jesuses, as little Christ's, to destroy the works of the devil. Amen? In our own lives and to help other people come out of bondage in the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? This is what a world overcomer does. We learn how to walk in the power and authority of Jesus in every situation, in every moment. If you are weary, if you are heavy laden, if you are burdened, if you are mentally and physically exhausted, you are not walking as a world overcomer in that moment. Are you hearing me? You're not available to other people. You could barely get out of bed. Amen? If you're burdened by fear and anxiety, the devil is like a sniper trying to take you out. Oh, spirit of fear over there. Spirit of anxiety over there. Listen, people who are dealing with these things are consumed by these things. And it leads to mental exhaustion if it's not dealt with in the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me tonight? God has called us to walk as world overcomers. He's, giving us, he's given us every tool that we need. He's given us His supernatural faith. He's given us His peace to guide, to umpire our hearts in the moment. His peace is an indicator of whether or not He's telling you to move forward or not. He's given us His love, His compassion, amen, which leads us in the moment, in moments of ministry. And who we are to minister His love to and His power to. So it's not about feeling like a world overcomer. What you need to do is have that baseline commitment and submission to Jesus. Jesus, regardless of what I'm feeling right now, I believe your word. And I'm going to find scriptures to stand on. And I'm not only going to stand on them, I'm going to speak them. Amen? I'm going to speak them until I get a vision 
a vision in my imagination of your word coming to pass in my life. What does Proverbs 29, 18 say? My people perish because they have no vision. Christians are perishing because they have no vision of God's word coming to pass in their imagination. We need to stop buckling under pressure. We need to stop buckling under persecution and hardness. And we need to be determined to stand firm as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And to not give up, but continue speaking the word of God until we see it come to pass in the natural. Amen? The spiritual should be more real to us than the natural. The natural is just a shadow of the spiritual. Everything in the natural was made from the spiritual. It existed prior in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm. We are spirit beings. Amen? We need to learn to be dominated by our spirit man. Not the natural. Not our emotions. Jesus says, I'm overcomer, so that settles it. I am overcomer. And I'm going to continue pressing on until I see the results that Jesus promises. Amen? Until I see the victory. So we need to get in the Word. And remember what Jesus overcame. You know, last week we looked at Psalm 103. I won't go there again. But Jesus overcame sin and death. He overcame sickness and disease. He overcame evil spirits and the devil. And tonight I want us to look at one of the incipient death things that he overcame. Tonight we're going to look at a spirit of fear. But he overcame discouragement. He overcame depression. He overcame fear, anxiety, and shame, and condemnation. Jesus overcame poverty. So these are all things that we should resist in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The last two weeks we've been looking at the Apostle Paul as a great example of a world overcomer. Turn with me to Philippians, if you would. Chapter 1. And remember, Paul wrote this letter to the Philippian church in the province of Macedonia. From prison. And as you're turning to Philippians, I'm just going to read a couple of verses out of Acts chapter 16 because this core... This corresponds with the letter to the Philippians. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Paul wanted to go to Asia, started moving in that direction, and he was forbidden by the Holy Spirit. When they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. In other words, he was in tune with the Spirit of God moment by moment. The Spirit was leading him. He was approving what is excellent, which is what we've talked about the last couple of weeks. Moment by moment guidance by the Holy Spirit. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. And here's their sign. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia, where the church of Philippi was was planted. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Amen. That's how the Holy Spirit works. He will give you visions. He will speak to you in your spirit man, which will relay to your mind as thoughts, desires, uh, direction for your life. And you know, a lot of things happened in Philippi. One thing that you might remember is that Paul and Silas... Um, they cast a demon out of a little girl and were thrown into prison. And they were praising God at midnight. So Paul is an awesome example of a world overcomer. Not only did he overcome the world who was persecuting him because he stood firm for the gospel of Jesus Christ, but he also overcame his own flesh. How many of you sitting in that nasty prison would be writing a letter of rejoicing and encouragement to a church in Philippi? Now, that takes a level of maturity in Jesus Christ. Amen? That takes a level of denying self. Too many of us are in love with self. There's too many Christians who have self-love on on the idol, on, on on the throne of their heart instead of Jesus. 
I care more about me, so I'm going to be writing you a letter about my suffering in prison, not, hey, you need to rejoice in Christ. Again, I say rejoice. No, hey, what can you do for me? Hi, can you help me get out of here? Can you, can you, can you send me something? I need, I need some money in my, in my little account here in the jail. i got to be able to get some things, right? I need a Snickers. I need some Coke. Paul didn't write any of that. Paul starts off this letter saying, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. You see, carnal people and carnal Christians use their past accomplishments to oppress, impress others and to try and open doors for themselves. But godly people are not out to impress others with themselves, but who their master is. Godly people, mature believers in Jesus Christ, are not out to impress others with their accomplishments. They're out to impress others with who their master is. The one who can change their lives. Amen? The one who can transform any situation. Paul Paul was proud of his master. More proud of his master than his service to his master. And if you think about servanthood to Jesus Christ, as Paul says in Romans chapter 12, is our reasonable service. Turn over there for a moment. Romans chapter 12. Let's just read that. Verse 1. Paul says, I appeal to you, I beg of you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Don't be so caught up in self-love. Amen? Don't be so caught up in creature comforts and trying to trying to protect your comfort zone. But present yourself as a living sacrifice to God. Holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service or your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Sometimes we make this too complex, but listen, as you have made the commitment, and sometimes it's a daily commitment to make yourself a living sacrifice to God, and you're renewing your mind every day. You are testing and proving the will of God for your life. What is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God? Paul wanted to go into Asia. The Holy Spirit said no, testing the will of God. Paul wanted to go here. The Holy Spirit forbade him. Paul had a vision. Hey, come to Macedonia, help us. He took that as a sign from the Lord. They're ready to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? And so God has called us to renew our minds so that we will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to know that when we see an open door to discern whether it's of God as an opportunity or whether it's of the devil as a distraction. Are you hearing me? That is approving what is excellent. You're growing, as Paul says later on in Philippians chapter 1, you're growing in God's love. His love is abounding in you as you increase in knowledge and discernment, verse 10 of chapter 1, so that you may approve what is excellent and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Paul says, I want you filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. But going back to Paul saying that I'm a servant of Jesus Christ, again, submission is key to you overcoming. Are you hearing me tonight? Submission is the key to you overcoming are you submitted to jesus christ you can think about the different areas of your life are you submitted to jesus christ in renewing your mind to the word of god are you submitted to jesus christ in your finances do you give tithes and offerings trusting the lord as he leads you to give those offerings are you trusting jesus what about socially Physically. Amen? Are you trusting Jesus? Are you submitted to Jesus in these areas? Can you truly say that I'm doing what I see the Father doing in this moment? I'm saying what I hear the Father saying in this moment. Amen, church? Let's go on down to Philippians chapter 1, verse 12 there. 
We've talked about the maturity process. We are abounding in His love and approving what is excellent as we increase in the knowledge of God and discernment of His will in the moment. Then in verse 12, Paul says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. You see, what Paul is saying here is that as an overcomer, I'm not letting my situation here in prison control me or dominate me. I'm still speaking my faith. Paul was outspoken in his faith. He's saying that my imprisonment here has let the whole imperial guard of Caesar's palace, the rest of my imprisonment, they know it is for Christ. They know it is for Christ. His imprisonment is advancing the gospel because of the way he's responding to it, friend. How are you responding to your life circumstances? Are you responding in a way that advances the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you, are you responding in a way that advances the love of Jesus Christ in the hearts of men, women, and children? Or are you responding in a way that advances the kingdom of the enemy? There's only two kingdoms. It's either the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of Jesus or the kingdom of the evil one. He goes on to say in verse 14, And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord, by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word of God without fear. Without fear. So Paul's example as a world overcomer has given confidence to other believers who maybe were afraid who maybe before they heard of Paul's imprisonment and his response to his imprisonment, that he's standing firm in faith, that he still believes that Jesus is the Son of God, that he believes that he has hope and that God has more for him to do. Amen? His response has caused confidence in these other believers so that they are now speaking the Word of God with no fear. With no fear. You see, God has called us to live in faith, not fear. In His faith. If I'm in fear, in that moment, I'm not in His faith. The Holy Spirit is not condemning you. He wants you set free tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an understanding of this spirit of fear and we're going to learn how to respond to it as an overcomer in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Just as Paul responded as an overcomer. Fear is a huge clog in the pipe, if you will. Preventing the full release of His peace from your spirit man to your soul and body and circumstances and relationships. You know, probably about five or six years ago, we had a little backup at the house. And I noticed that in the shower, some nasty stuff started coming up. And I'm like, oh boy, this couldn't be good. Now, I told you last week, you know, my wife and I had that conversation. I'm not a (laughs) fixer-upper. So I'm like, dear, we need to, we need to call somebody. <laughs> this isn't good. It doesn't smell good. Can't, can't have this very long. So we call this plumber. The plumber comes and, uh, you know, he was, he actually he had, he got on the roof. He had one of those, you know, huge snakes. Oh my goodness. I've never seen one so big. I guess that's the professional one, right? So he got on the roof and he went down in there and, you know, after a while I went outside and, you know, just to check on him, I looked up and I was like, Hey, you okay? Next thing I know, he pulls out three feet. Oh, is that three feet? Well, maybe that's big. Three feet of (laughs) hairball. I was just like, oh my goodness. So that was the clog. That was the clog. Preventing cleanliness in the house. Amen? Preventing us from doing things that we needed to do to move forward. 
Listen, if you have a clog in your soul, if you're weary, you're physically tired, if you have fear that's controlling your soul, you're preventing the forward progress to your destiny. You're, for, you're preventing the forward progress to fulfilling the purpose that God has placed in your heart. So we've got to learn to deal with these things quickly so that we can move forward in the destiny and purpose that God has for us. Listen, we have to have the attitude that nothing will delay me, nothing will distract me from fulfilling God's purpose for my life. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Jesus overcame this, so I am overcoming it in His power. Amen? God does not want you walking around controlled by a spirit of fear. Fear clogs the pipe. Fear and anxiety and worry have become a common condition of our world today. Listen, far too many people lie awake, tormented at night by fear and worry. Fear will motivate you to make bad decisions that you will regret. Cause you to give up on people, to quit things that you should not be quitting. Nothing good ever comes from decisions and actions that are based in fear because we are operating out of the wrong kingdom. Do you understand that when you are operating in fear, you are operating out of the kingdom of darkness? I'm operating out of the kingdom of light when I'm operating in faith. Hear me. At any given moment, you can be operating in either kingdom. It's either faith or fear. Which one? Choose you this day who you will serve. Joshua said, as for me in my house, I will serve the Lord. And so as the Holy Spirit shows me in any moment, if, I am, if I'm teetering into the other kingdom, I'm going to correct that quickly. And I'm going to abide in Christ in that moment. Amen? Hallelujah. Fear is not only unpleasant to experience, but it invites evil into your life. It's an open door to the enemy. Fear is like an odor that's attracting demons. The longer you stay in fear the more trouble you're going to see in your life. Are you hearing me tonight? All emotions can be categorized as either love-based or fear-based. All of the emotions in the kingdom of God are love-based. Galatians 5.22 The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Amen? They're all love-based. But in moment fear can separate you from the very presence of God who lives within you because it clogs that pipe clogs that gateway if you will from your spirit man to your soul fear diminishes us it shrinks our world fear isolates us fear weighs us down fear creates pain and torment fear disconnects us from our true identity fear steals our destiny if you continue to allow it in your life. Fear gives the enemy permission to harass us. Listen, there are different types of fear. The main two are fear of failure, fear of rejection. But there are others that cause irrational thoughts like fear of the unknown or fear of man looking for approval and acceptance from men instead of from God. Amen? You might say there is a good fear, that fear that leads to rational thinking. If you're in a dark alley and you see someone dressed in an overcoat, you know, that fear is going to it's going to invoke your fight or flight response or for me the freeze response as we talked about a few weeks ago. <laughs> and that fight or flight response is actually designed by our creator so that you can take action in that moment whether you're going to fight or run. Amen. It causes your necessary blood vessels to dilate to your heart and brain, it causes others to constrict to your stomach and, you know, your uh, intestines that you don't need those in the moment. So blood goes where it is necessary so that you can take the appropriate action. But Paul is saying here in verse 14 that these, because of my imprisonment and the way that I have responded as overcomer, are much more bold to speak the Word of God without fear. If I have no fear, I am walking in the peace of Christ. And the good news is, Jesus never takes His peace from us. 
It's deposited in your spirit, man. We just have to learn how to deal with these clogs in our soulish realm to release the peace of Christ in the moment. Amen, church? To live as the overcomer, to be bold as these believers were. Boldness in Christ. When I'm in no fear, I'm in boldness. I'm in confidence in Christ. I'm focused on the kingdom of God, not myself and my circumstances. You see, no fear advances the gospel. A no fear attitude writes a letter of rejoicing to encourage others from prison. Are you hearing me tonight? A no fear attitude overcomes the flesh, the world, and the enemy. You see, I'm overcoming the flesh when I'm dealing with this fear appropriately in the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Amen, church? So what I'm saying tonight is that we must be set free from fear to hear His voice in the moment. You may be wondering, why am I not hearing His voice? Jesus, why am I not receiving your strategy for this situation? Are you in fear? Fear can clog that communication channel. Another big one is unforgiveness. And we'll talk about that another, another Wednesday. We must be set free from fear to hear His voice, to walk in victory as an overcomer. So as Paul says here, you know, they are preaching, they are speaking the Word of God without fear. And this is how he wants us to live our lives as overcomers. Well, where does fear come from? Turn over to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The scripture says that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So if faith comes from knowledge of the word of God, guess where fear comes from? Fear comes from knowledge of the world, the flesh, and the enemy. The things that Jesus has already overcome. That he's called us to overcome. As we walk in His power, right? So if I'm in fear, you know, Isaiah 26.3 says that if I will keep my mind stayed on Him, if I will keep my thoughts focused on Him, He will give me perfect peace. In other words, that perfect peace will be released from my spirit man. Amen? That's Isaiah 26.3. And so there is this notion here that I have to cooperate. This understanding, if you will. That I have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit of God. He's given me every tool. He's given me everything I need to overcome fear, to walk in peace. But I have to learn how to release that peace. And he says it in Isaiah 26.3. By keeping your mind stayed on Him. Amen? Consider Jesus, Hebrews says, so that you will not grow weary. If you have a lack of peace, if you're in fear, could it be that you're focused on you? And your problems instead of Jesus. The solution to your problems. Are you hearing me tonight? Get this. Get this. All too often, we are praying to God about our problem. Instead of speaking to our problem about how big our God is. Oh God, just if you'll just help me with this problem, help me deal with, with this fear. Oh God, just, just help me get through this. You know, I'm going to share something with you. The last, the last uh, three or four weeks, I've actually been rebuking a spirit of fear. See, the devil knew I was going to be preaching this message, glory to God. And something popped up health-wise that I used to deal with years ago. And I thought that that thing was gone. It was IBS. I don't know if you ever heard of IBS. It doesn't sound very pretty. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. It's the bowel thing. And uh, and so, you know, like three or four weeks ago, you know, I just got this spirit of fear. Like, oh, no. It's back. It's terrible. 
it's a horrible feeling. And, uh, you know, just trying to make it here from Miami, <laughs> there aren't many stops. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> prayed, prayed about wearing a diaper. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, we won't go into any more detail. But Jesus said, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Speak to it. Speak to it. So I spoke to it. I commanded peace. I said, peace of Christ to you in Jesus' name. Leave and do not come back. And Pastor Kurt prayed for me. And praise God. I drove here today with no problems. Hallelujah. But I tell you, you have to learn to deal with those things quickly. Because what if I had submitted to that? What if I said, oh, well, I still got some of that medicine I used to take. I mean, it's like 10 years old, but... What if I would have submitted and said, oh, well, I'll just find a way to deal with it and deal with these symptoms. And No, I said, I stood firm and I said, no, I am not. And I told my wife, I said, I'm not living like this ever again. God does not want me to live like this. He wants me to walk in health and he wants me to be able to control myself in Jesus name. Amen. And so I'm not giving in to this fear. I command you, spirit of fear, to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. And you continue to rebuke that spirit of fear until he leaves. Listen, if our Savior had to rebuke the enemy three times in the wilderness, Lord have mercy, just stand firm until he leaves. Amen? Keep speaking. Keep telling him to leave. Keep telling what you believe. Keep speaking the word of God. Because I am a world overcomer. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Fear comes by hearing the voice of the world, the devil, and the flesh. Fear comes when I'm giving too much value to the things of the world, the devil, and my flesh. If I would have valued that, it would still be with me. But I don't value that in Jesus' name. I value the Word of God. Amen? The Word of God said He sent His Word to heal me. And so I'm persistent. I am walking in healing in the name of Jesus. Now listen, that doesn't mean that if sickness hits me that I'm going to walk around condemned and ashamed. No, I'm going to keep resisting it. Praise God, until I'm walking in divine health all the time. Amen? Amen. So if it hits me, I'm going to resist it, and Lord have mercy. Someone else may have it for a week, but praise God, I'm going to have it for less, because I'm going to resist it until it's gone. Amen? Amen? To the point, until I get to the point where I'm not getting sick anymore. So faith is based on an accurate knowledge, and fear is based on an inaccurate knowledge. Are you hearing me? Fear tells me that I have to do it. Fear tells me that I have to figure it out. Whatever the situation is, whether it's in your finances or your relationships or whatever it is, you apply it to your life. Let the Holy Spirit apply it to your life. Amen? Fear tells me that it's all about me and I have to do it. Faith says, I rest in you, Jesus. And I thank you that you are giving me the solution that you've already created, that you already have provided. Amen? And so we've got to learn to walk in His faith. Fear is me trusting my flesh. Faith is me trusting Jesus. It's really a question of trust. Do you trust Him? Do you trust Him in your finances? Do you, do you trust Him with regard to your children? Mm. You know, I kind of imagine sometimes... Josiah will wake up and he'll, I don't know if he had a bad dream or what, but he'll just wake up and he'll be crying. You know, he's one and a half, and so he'll come out of the, come out of the room. It may be just because he woke up and he, nobody was in there but him, you know, so maybe he felt lonely or something. Who knows? Um, but he'll wake up and he'll go, he'll just start crying. Ah! You know, that face they make, this pitiful face, you know. And so, you know, either Paul or I will just uh, grab him and just comfort him and say, it's okay, buddy, Mommy, mommy's here, dada's here, we love you. It's okay. And he'll calm down. He'll put his, put his head in your shoulder until that peace just consumes him. How many of us need to do that with Father? Abba, Father. Just need to put our head in his shoulder and let him tell you it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I love you. Be set free. Tonight, it is over. 
It is finished. You don't have to put up with it anymore. Fear be gone in the name of Jesus. And the anxiety that that fear brings be gone in the name of Jesus. You are free tonight from any spirit of fear. Hallelujah. You know, I remember talking with this one guy in South Florida. He was a pretty wealthy guy. Back then, I was known as the networking pastor because I went to all the, I mean, I, literally, I went to a lot of the business networking events in, in Miami just to, you know, just to get connected with people and allow the Lord to minister to people who wouldn't have anything to do with the church normally. And... um and I don't remember any other time. In fact, I don't remember any time at any of those networking events that there was ever another pastor. I was the only one that was ever there in all those, what, four or five years. Um, so that's a mission field right there. But I remember this one guy that I met. He was a very wealthy guy. He had done well for himself, but he didn't want anything to do with God. And We had some interesting conversations. But I remember one time I met with him and had coffee with him at a Starbucks and he uh, he asked me if I'd like to have a mega church. Obviously, he didn't know me. He said, "I can, I can make you famous, like one of these guys, you know, on TV with tens of thousands of people." I don't. I guess he had connections like that. And uh, he said, "I can make you famous. There's one condition. You can't talk about Jesus." I said, well, you don't know me, do you? First of all, it's not about my fame. It's about his fame. And second of all, I would never do anything where I can't mention the name of Jesus. Right. Amen? Amen? But he had this conversation, you know, and he, his, his excuse for not coming to God was, you know, I'm, I can't serve a God who wants his people to be in fear all the time. You know, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And, you know, all, all who serve God have to be in fear. You know, he was taking scriptures out of context. And I, tr I tried to explain to him, you know, in the context of those scriptures that fear is talking about honoring and reverencing God with the way you live your life, with the way you think and speak and treat others. But he didn't, he didn't want to hear it. So my discernment in the Holy Spirit was don't cast your pearls before swine. <laughs> Not everybody's ready in that moment to receive the truth, and the Holy Spirit will show you who is. Amen? Amen. But we need to understand that reverence for the Lord, respect for the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. Amen? God does not want you walking around in fear. Psalm 138 tells us that He has exalted His Word above His name and all things. So shouldn't we do the same? If He has exalted His Word and above His name and above all things, shouldn't we do the same? It goes on to say that He preserves my life even though I walk in the midst of trouble. He delivers me. He delivers me. So if I will learn to cooperate, if I will keep my thoughts, keep my mind stayed and focused on Him, no matter what the situation is, I will walk in His perfect peace. Amen? Hallelujah. I want us to close. Let's go back over to 2 Timothy. You know, we were there in 2 Timothy on Mother's Day. And Paul here, is writing his, obviously, his second letter to Timothy. But he's ministering to Timothy, his son in the faith, in request to, in response to Timothy's request for guidance. There's a lot going on here that if you don't understand the context, you won't really understand why Paul is saying these things to Timothy. Why is he reminding him of his mother and grandmother's sincere faith? Why is he telling him not to walk in a spirit of fear? That God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and self Control. This letter was actually written around 67 A.D. That's Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. Amen? You know, that, that's something that's always, you know, I've never understood how people can say that, you know, Jesus isn't so important. And, you know, all of our 
dating in, in, in history revolves around his birth. <laughs> you can't say that about Muhammad. You can't say that about Harry Krishna. You can't say that about Buddha. I mean, we're in the year 2018. That's 2018 years from the birth of Christ. Hello? So this letter was written in 67 A.D., but if you back up three years, 64 A.D., the Roman emperor Nero had given an order to burn a section of Rome. You remember hearing the saying that, Rome, that Nero fiddled while Rome burned? Well, he actually ordered the burning of a section of Rome so that they could build a huge golden palace for him. Well, guess what? The people didn't like it too much. And so they were looking for someone to blame. They were looking for someone to execute for the burning of Rome. Well, guess who Nero blamed it on? The Christians. Nero blamed the Christians. He used them as scapegoats and charged them as arsons so that he would not be charged and executed. executed. And so during the time that this letter is written to Timothy by Paul, the church is under intense persecution. Christians are being killed. Christians are being murdered based on a lie, based on a betrayal. And so Timothy is dealing with this persecution in the Roman province of Ephesus because he's the bishop at Ephesus. Can you imagine? The church is under intense persecution and Timothy is the highest profile Christian in the province. He's the bishop of Ephesus. Some say there were 100,000 people as part of this church in Ephesus. 100,000 people who called, the name, called on the name of Christ. But because of this persecution, you know, there's nothing like persecution to unite Christians. The real Christians. And those who are not so real, flee. And so Timothy's experiencing some of that. He's experiencing some betrayal. Even some who he thought were faithful are backing out in cowardice, afraid of death. He's experiencing sabotage and defection. He's experiencing some of them saying, we love you, pastor, but see ya. We've had a change of heart. Circumstances have changed. Jesus didn't change. So was your commitment based on circumstances? Or was it based on Jesus? We love you, Pastor. But we're not willing to die. The church was declining. You know, that would be someone who is worshiping self, self-love, instead of a living sacrifice to Jesus Christ, even unto death. Amen? Amen. Timothy is the most visible Christian, as I said. And again, he sent a letter asking Paul for guidance. And so this is Paul's response. 2 Timothy 1, and we'll read through this quickly. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. Promise of life in Christ Jesus. The worst thing that can happen to you in the natural is actually the best thing that can happen to you as a believer in Jesus. is to die and be in His presence. Amen? Amen? When will we get this attitude? As overcomers. Amen? To Timothy, my beloved child, my son in the faith who I care about deeply, grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen, I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first dwelt in your grandmother Lois, in your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan and to flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. Timothy, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us. In Christ Jesus before the ages began and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. Do not be ashamed, Timothy, verse 8. 
of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be ashamed, He's saying to us this evening. Do not be ashamed when the world comes against you, when the devil comes against you, even when your flesh rises up. Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ, but stand firm and respond in faith. Do not submit to a spirit of fear, He's saying. You see, a spirit of fear had tried to come on Timothy because of everything that he was facing. People were leaving. People were sabotaging. People were defecting. People were being unfaithful. People were probably talking behind his back. Death threats were probably coming his way. He was the most high-profile Christian in Ephesus. And yet Paul says, do not submit to that spirit of fear. That spirit of fear is not from God. You have to know what is from God and what is not from God. And you resist what is not from God. You see, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. And he says to Timothy, Timothy, this is how I want you to deal with this spirit of fear. I want you to remember the sincere faith that was passed on to you. I want you to remember the goodness of God through your grandmother, through your mother that was passed on. I want you to invoke your memory. I want you to remember my goodness through your mother and your grandmother. You remember the goodness of God in that moment when that fear tries to come upon you. You remember the goodness of God and you begin to thank God. You begin to thank God and you see the Word of God come into pass in your imagination, and then you speak the Word. I rebuke you, you spirit of fear. You leave me now in the name of Jesus and never come back, for I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hundreds of times in Scriptures, the Bible tells us, do not fear. Fear not. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said to His disciples. Hundreds of times in a variety of ways. Find the Scriptures where the Bible says, Do not fear. Do not fear. And you stand on those Scriptures. Isaiah chapter 40. God says, Do not fear, for I am with you. I am with you. I uphold you with my righteous right hand. I am with you. We have no reason to fear. One of our presidents said that we have nothing to fear but fear itself. I rebuke that lie in the name of Jesus. We have nothing to fear in Jesus Christ. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You have nothing to fear. You are a world overcomer. Do not submit to a spirit of fear. We must submit to His faith. Amen? His faith that rises up in that moment to cast off that spirit of fear. I'm not submitting to you. In the name of Jesus. I will not be controlled by a spirit of fear or the anxiety that is attached to it. Amen? I will not think irrationally because of that fear and that anxiety. I will stand firm and I will think rationally and I will apply the Word of God to my life and walk in victory. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Do you receive that Word tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You for Your Word. And I thank you for the understanding that faith comes from knowledge of you and your word. And fear comes from knowledge of the world, the enemy, and my flesh. And so, Father, we purpose to walk as victors, as world overcomers. We purpose tonight not to submit to a spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Someone in here is dealing with a spirit of fear tonight. And I command that spirit of fear be gone and never come back in Jesus' name. It's over. It is finished. Tonight, it is over right this moment. No longer will you be controlled or oppressed by a spirit of fear and anxiety. You will walk in freedom. Christ has set you free. Now you must cooperate with the Holy Spirit to continue to walk in that freedom. Resist anything that is not of God. Amen, church? We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We lift high the name of Jesus tonight. We thank you. Jesus, because you wore the victor's crown, we are world overcomers. And that means I have the power, your power and authority to overcome my flesh, to command my flesh to get in alignment to the Word of God, to walk in the peace that is in my spirit, man. Father, we release your peace tonight to our soulish realms. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you have a tithe or offering tonight, you could place your uh, tithe or offering envelope in the uh, brown receptacle in the, in the back. And if you're online and the Lord leads you to give a tithe or an offering, you can just click on the giving tab on the website. It'll tell you and give you instruction on how you can give 
via the website. We appreciate you. We love you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.